In the previous video, we took a UV snapshot of our model. In this video, what we're gonna do is set up that UV snapshot within Photoshop so we can begin texturing it. So first thing I can notice is that the UV snapshot is very hard to see. I mean, I can't really make much use of this, so I wanna darken this up a bit. And I usually do that by just duplicating the UV snapshot four times. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna select duplicate and click OK, and then I'll right click again on the layer. I'm just gonna do this four times to duplicate this layer. And you can notice each time I do it, my UV snapshot is getting just a little bit darker and easier to see. So now I know anything that I texture in this area of the model is going to be applied to that rope, that little twine going around the handle. And now I wanna make this easier to access. I'm gonna take all four of these. Actually, I'm gonna come down here, select a group, then I'm going to take all four of these and I'm going to just drag this up into the group. And the group is just this little folder down here. You just click on that. It's going to create this little folder. Then close that folder and you can see I can turn this on and off. Now I want to come down here and I also want to create a new layer. And I'm going to drop that layer below the group so it's going to appear underneath it. And now what I need is I need that default texture that was on our material because that's going to help if any bleeding happens at the UV seams, which is the very edges. If any bleeding happens due to LOD distance or whatever, I want that bleeding to kind of be masked or hidden. And one way to handle that is to have the area around, directly around your UV shell to be the same color as, or a similar color as what your texture is going to be based off of. So we already took care of that inside of Maya. So let's go ahead and open up Maya. And we wanna open up our material editor. So I'm just gonna press Q, my selection. I'm gonna select one of these objects here. And you can see this is the color that we want it, as around our UV shell is this color here. We kind of want that to mask any bleeding that happens from LOD to be around our UV shell. So we need to get this color here. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're gonna come up here. We're gonna select the handle rope from our hyper shade editor. And then we're gonna hit control A and we're going to come over and select the color of this handle rope material. Alternatively, to get to that, you could just select one of the ropes, then select the handle rope material that's assigned to that rope. And then we can come over here. And now, this is not going to be very useful for us because Photoshop uses RGB, and that's what we need to see here to make this a lot faster. Is we need to see RG and B. Well, how do we get that? All we have to do is come over here, and there's this drop down option. You just drop this down, and we're going to select RGB 0 to 255. It's going to give us the values 205, 202, and 149. That is this base color that we have on this material here for our rope twines. So I know what that is. I'm just going to write that down or make a mental note. 205, 202, 149. That's my RGB values. And then I can just open up Photoshop. And I can come over here and click on one of the color swatches. And just pick 205 for R, 202 for green, and 149 for blue. As you can see, I've already done this to save time. So I just go ahead and click OK. And then I'm just going to paint that in the background. And now we can see it very clearly. We can see our UV shell and we can paint our texture behind us. Now easily, we can always select this. And let's say as we're texturing, this is making it a little hard to see. We can just go to opacity and drop the opacity down. And you can see that as I do that, I can choose how lightly I want it to appear or how dark I want it to appear. So that's just a quick little tip there. Now I'm not actually going to texture on this layer. This is just going to be our background texture. We want to actually texture on a new layer. So I'll create a new layer and this will be the layer that I texture on. So this is kind of a basic setup. So I would set up the background color to hide or mask any UV seams. Then I would set up the layer that I'm going to be using to apply the texture on. This is the layer that I would texture on along with any additional layers above it. I would just go ahead and create additional layers and I can hide my UV layout just by clicking the little eye icon. Let's do the same thing with our UV snap sword shot. So this is our UV snapshot for our sword. So again, we'll just duplicate this four times. So this is one, two, and then we need a fourth. So I'll go ahead and Duplicate this one more time. Now we have all four. I'll create a group to put them in. So I'll select all four of them, drop them inside of a group. Go ahead and close this little group icon. And then we'll just go ahead and create one more layer. And this is gonna be a little bit more complicated because this was not all just one color like the other one was. This rope twine just had one solid color. Well, this has multiple colors. Well, how do we handle that? Well, we already know our blade is over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the selection tool and I'm just gonna marquee select all this area.
square by our blade. And I'm going to try to keep sort of a 50-50 between this handle here and this area here. Now I have this area selected so I can paint a texture in here. Well, what color was this? Well, again, we'll come back over here now. So I just click on Maya here. Now we'll find our blade material and I'll go ahead and click on the color and you'll see it maintains the RGB values and I can see that it's 190 all the way down. So all I have to do is go back to Photoshop, open up my color picker, choose 190 all the way down. So I'll just type 190, 190 and 190 then press OK. And that's the initial color then I'll go ahead and click the paint bucket and I'll paint that in there. Now I need to handle this area here with our hilt. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just select another marquee select and I can get up close to it. This does not have to be perfect. You can overlap a little bit. So I'll just kind of go like that. And I want to make sure that I'm getting below the hilt, but not covering up the actual handle area because I don't want to cover this up. I just want to get this area up here. So I can select that. And now I need color for this one. So now I need to come over and get that. So I'll go back into Maya. And this is the hilt. So I'll select the hilt. Now I need the color for it that we created. So it's 189 by 190 by 86. So I'll go back into Photoshop and I will select my color picker. I'll do 189 by 190 by, what was that? I'll go back. If you can't remember, you just go back. 189 by 190 by 86. And then I'll go back here and I'll just type in 86 and press OK. And then I click my paint bucket and I'll just go ahead and paint again. And you can see, there we go. We have this one here, this one here, but we still have one area down here that is gonna be where our wood texture is. So we need to kind of just get sort of maybe a brown for now, just to fill that in with something. So it's not just a blank area. So I'll go ahead and I'll just create a brown. And you can see, I just typed in the values real fast of 101, 67, 33. That's kind of a dark brown and I can change sort of the hue, maybe make it a little bit lighter. This is kind of just guesswork here. I looked up the RGB values of brown because I couldn't remember online. And then I just uh, type those in there and I'll press OK. And this is just something temporary for now, just to fill in this area here. And you'll notice I can't paint in there if I just click on it. It's because I have this area selected. So I have to deselect. So I'll just select the selection tool and then just click. Then I'll click the paint tool and I'll just paint down here. Now we have this divided into different sections. And you're probably looking and noticing that we have this area right here where we've moved this. Well, remember this area here, this whole bottom half is going to be projected. We're not going to be texturing this. So ignore this for right now. You could even go into your UV maps, each one of these, select them all, and you could erase that there. So I could just kind of erase it, but it, I'd have to do it one at a time because that'd be the only way to do it. But I'm not even going to worry about it. I'll say control Z because I'm not, I'm going to ignore these areas here. So now this here will be my UV background. So I'll just go ahead and type this in and I'll just call this the background. You just type that in as your background and I'll go to the first one and I'll do the same thing. I'll just type in a, as background. Now I know that this is the background. I'm texturing in the layer above the background and below the group because this is our, if I double click on the group, I can call this a UV snapshot. So I know that's what that is. This whole group is just all for those UV snapshots. And I can do the same thing here. I can just call this one UV snapshot. Now this tutorial series is not about texturing. So you'd have to watch a tutorial series on texturing. I'll also go ahead and create another layer here. But what you'll want to do is texture your hilt if you actually even want to apply a texture to this. Because I was actually, when I put this in a video game, I probably would have just applied a environmental map to this, which will create a reflection. So I probably wouldn't even apply a texture to this because I really wouldn't want one. I'd maybe just create a cube map or what have you based on the game engine, how it handles environment maps. And also with the blade, I may actually create a texture for the blade if it was me and I was going to add this to a game. I'd want some kind of texture, but I would also probably add an environmental map to this to create reflection. But this I'm not even going to worry about. You can go ahead and texture this if you want to. You'll need to learn how to texture in Photoshop if you don't already know how. Or you could just leave it as it is and not even worry about it. And then come over here. But I will show you in the next video how to create a rope texture because this is something that I want you to be able to do so you can see the overall outcome of our twine going down the handle. So I will show you in the next video how we're going to create a texture for this rope so we can apply this to our model before we project it.
If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.